guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. It's Friday, it's almost the weekend, it's time for me to give a shout out to a very popular intake manifold. Of course, I'm talking about the Tunnel Ram, more specifically the Holley High Ram and how well it works on a stroker motor. 468 inches, we ran it carbureted, we ran it fuel injected, we ran a lot of other intakes. Let's check it out. In this video, we have a 468 cubic inch all aluminum LS3 based stroker motor and I ran a comparison between the Holley High Ram fuel injected and the Holley High Ram carbureted. So which one makes more power? I also tested the fast manifold, the factory LS3 manifold. Then we stepped up to some LS7 stuff and I ran a single four barrel from mast. To get things started on our salute to the tunnel ramp, we're going to take a look at a test I did on a 468 inch cubic inch stroker LS3 version and to give you an idea what it took to get to that displacement we had a sleeved block a sleeved aluminum block we went out to a 4185 bore and then combined that with a 4250 stroke now we had a flat top piston in this thing which meant with the compression or with the combustion chamber that we ran on our the first set of heads we ran were from Procomp they were CNC ported LS3 heads this produced a static compression of right at 12 to 1. So this was a, you know, a fairly healthy buildup. We had a good sized camshaft in it from Comp Cams. It was an off-the-shelf hydraulic roller, 624 lift. It was a 255-271 degree duration split and 115 degree lobe separation angle. We had factory LS3 rockers because the ProComp heads had a, was the head that they used was based on an LS3, so it had an offset rocker. Inch and seven eighths headers with no mufflers, just collector extensions. We started out with the factory LS3 intake manifold and a 92 millimeter throttle body that goes on the inlet of that combination. Obviously, we tuned this thing with the Holly HP management system, so the air, fuel, and timing were all right. We used 75 pound injectors. So run with the factory LS3 intake oh. and the uh, ProComp CNC ported LS3 heads. Our 468 produced 672 horsepower, so pretty good. And 631 foot-pounds. And to give you an idea, here's how this stroker compared to a stock LS3 crate motor, basically. So this is kind of what the LS3 motor does when we run it in the same manner as the stroker. It makes less than 500 horsepower and less than 500 foot-pounds. So we were up quite a bit with our stroker combination. But now let's take a look and see the first test that we did. We'll go ahead and get rid of our stock LS3. The first test we did was to um, replace the factory LS3 intake with a fast intake manifold, an LSXR, and a 102 millimeter throttle body. But as you can see, not really very much gain. In fact, some losses in some places. The factory LS3 manifold works very well, and the fast manifold on the LS3 application is really not that much of an upgrade, uh, if, if at all, in some cases. And we found that over and over again. Now, the fast cathedral port, big changes in power when you run those on cathedral port applications and the fast on the LS7, even good gains from the fast LS7 over the factory manifold. But on the LS3, the factory LS3 manifold is just kind of hard to beat. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we added our Holly High Ram. So you can see, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the fast here. So you can see on our high ram, the high ram did indeed make more peak power. In fact, quite a bit more power. Peak power was up to 713 horsepower. So from, you know, 5,800 on up, the Holly high ram, definitely better than the um, factory long runner LS3 intake. But below that point, <coughs> excuse me, below that point, the long runner manifold definitely made more torque. You can see below 5,600 RPM, even down here at 4,200, you know, we had a difference of 574 foot-pounds versus 614 foot-pounds. So we had some fairly sizable torque gains from the long runner stuff compared to the Holly. But on the top of the rev range, the short runner and tunnel ram style manifold, and this was run fuel injected with injectors and uh, an, an, I think it was a single throttle body on this one. Let's take a look and make sure. Yes, and the same 102 millimeter throttle body because there are a variety of different lids available for the Holly High Ram. So we ran it with a lid and a front mounted throttle body, 102 millimeter throttle body. So 
over 700 horsepower with the high ram. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we changed over the lids on the high ram. So after illustrating how well the high ram does compared, you know, the tunnel ram power does compared to the long runner stock uh, LS3 intake manifold, now we need to make some more modifications to the high ram because the high ram, the way that Holly configured it, was available with a number of different lids so we could pick the one that we chose in the first test was a single throttle body front mounted entry, kind of where it is on a lot of LS stuff. But we also put a dual quad lid on the high ram and ran it with two four barrel carburetors because if you have a tunnel ram, it has to have dual quads on it, right? So that's exactly what we did to illustrate what, you know, kind of what maybe more flow does because maybe a 102 millimeter throttle body is not enough flow for a 700 horsepower motor. But more importantly, we get um, the effect of charge cooling. So we show you what happens here. Here's what happened when we put our dual lid on the high ram. And I think that we ran this with a pair of 750s. Actually two 600 uh, Hollies on it. 2650s, I think. But we ran with two carburetors and we see um, a fairly good jump in power. And we see it from about 4,500 RPM all the way up. It was fairly consistent all the way through the RPM range from 4,500. Below that, not a lot of change. So the one thing that that tells us in this application is that it's not from airflow. So it's not that we put a bigger opening basically in the throttle body, although we did. Um, it's from charge cooling. So, <coughs> excuse me, what we're doing is introducing now is fuel um, at the top of the manifold and then going into the runners. So there's time for charge cooling to take effect as the air goes through and the fuel atomizes, uh, we get charge cooling. So we change the temperature of the air and that improves power. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. We're seeing a, a good size gain in power from 4,500 all the way out to 7,000 with the introduction of fuel at the top of the manifold because we didn't change runner length. We didn't change shape or, I mean, the whole base of the manifold is exactly the same. We're changing the opening and then we're changing the fact that we went from fuel injection where the fuel is injected down at the port near the cylinder head. So very little time for charge cooling to take effect, but much more with the carburetor. So this is what we're seeing here with charge cooling and it made some pretty good power gain. So now let's take a look at our final test where we do two changes at once. Okay, our final test, so prepare your comments, um, included actually three changes made to this same combination. Now we retain the short block and camshaft and all of that stuff, but what we did after running the the two tests on the high rams and the L or the LSXR intake versus the factory intake was change over to LS7 heads. That necessitated a couple of other changes, obviously. So what we did was, we put on, we replaced the ProComp Speedmaster CNC ported LS3 heads. And I think that these heads were done by the guys at Dr. J's. And we took those heads off and put a set of LS7, CNC ported LS7 heads on from the guys at Texas Speed. They do good stuff over there. They supplied these heads for a head test that we did. We ran them on a much bigger. 495 inch motor but I also used them on this 468 so we installed the Texas Speed heads on there but when we did obviously we needed a different intake manifold because now we need an LS7 based intake manifold and unfortunately I did not have a high ram for that but we what we did have was a mast um, 4500 single four barrel split CNC ported double throw down intake manifold so I wanted to put that intake manifold on there and then the other change that had to happen because we put the LS7 heads on is we had to run LS7 rockers. So that necessitated a change in rocker ratio because the LS7 rockers are 1.8 and all of the LS3 stuff run previously was 1.7. So you guys can let me know when you see the change in power versus what we ran with the high ram and this, this single four barrel with the LS7. Let me know in the comments what do you think it was. Is it the added lift? from the cam, from the 1.8 rockers? Is it the extra flow probably from the LS7 heads? Is it the change in the intake manifold? Unfortunately, I wish I would have had a an LS7 high ram. That way we could have at least eliminated one of the variables, um, but unfortunately I did not. But here's what happened when we installed the all of those modifications. 
you can see power was up quite a bit. Um, we're up to 759, yeah, 759.5. So we'll call that 760 horsepower. Um, peak torque changed very little, but, but we extended it out quite a bit. Peak torque was 634 foot pounds. Yeah, 634 foot pounds. And as you can see, it just made more power primarily above 5,500 RPM and certainly good gains from 6,000 to 7,000 RPM. Um, I have compared the single four barrel mast intakes to the high rams on other applications and the high ram seems to do a little bit better. So I'm very curious as to what would have happened on this combination had we run a high ram, especially with two 750s or something like that on top of the high ram. But this combination did very well. The mass, the mast intake obviously looked amazing. It was CNC ported two piece deal. We ran a, a 1050 dominator on it and that obviously worked well. We were able to dial the tune in on that. So this combination made really good power with the LS7 heads from the guys at Texas Speed. 760 horsepower. You know, this would be a really good little stroker to be running around with on if you put this in a Fox body or really almost anything. You know, 760 horsepower would be getting with a program, especially if then you added like a plate shot of like a 250. So then it could be a thousand horsepower motor. That's our salute to the tunnel ram. I know that we're ending with a single four barrel, but let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn in this little comparison running the Holley High Ram carbureted in the Holley High Ram fuel injected on our 468 cubic inch all aluminum LS stroker? Well, we learned a lot of cool stuff. Carburation cools the charge. We get more power from that. That works very well. But what about all the other stuff? Go ahead, make the comments. Why'd you put the LS7 heads on there? Why didn't you change the rockers? Why'd you use a single four barrel? Why didn't you put another Holley on there? Go ahead, make the comments. Yell, I can take it. It's the weekend. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing just like this coming up. Again, make sure, like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff.